Greetings to all the saints of the members of the body of Christ. One more time we are in our Bible study. And I'm pleased to say God is good and God is great and his mercy endureth forever. And according to the scripture, let the Redeemer of the Lord say so. And listen up, brothers and sisters, without the word in time like this, because our eyes, our ears, some who can see it literally, and our ears can hear it, what is happening in and around the world. We got to say thanks be to God that is an ever faithful God who watches over his people. And without the word, let me just show you this, without the word of God, you will be a dead meat against the adversary. And so therefore this evening, we want to go back into the Holy Scripture. And before we go back into it, let me just greet all the saints of the members of the body of Christ, all the e-members, uh, participators of this gospel. I greet you with grace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. Let us look to the Lord in prayer for his benevolence, kindness, and his greatness towards us. Shall we just pray? Give God a praise in the house. Praise him, praise him. Father, we thank you for this blessed night. Wherein we can go into your word. Holy Father, we praise you for your great kindness and your great blessing towards us. God, as we get into your word, we ask that the Spirit of God will come down on us and open up our understanding and give us clarity of reasoning and ability and precision. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bind Satan's stronghold. We send back the prince of darkness. We reverse his plot. God, we know who we believe in and we know who we are persuaded by that you will be able to keep us from falling in this wicked time and eon. God, you know us by name, number. Lord, we come against the prince of darkness, the one who withstood against the saints of God. And even now, oh Lord, as we are about to get into your holy scripture we pray for a spirit of clarity a spirit of inspiration and revelation and motivation give us a word that can edify us in this time and season lord we look to you now and we give you the praise and the glory in the exalted name christ jesus our lord and our savior and our king of king and the lord of lord we just give that the praise to the most high God. Praise God. Back to the Bible, or back to the holy word of God. We are still in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4. And we were, last week, we were looking at the final request of the Apostle Paul as his time about to be expired. And so as his time about to expire, he penned the letter to Timothy and sent certain prerequisites that he would like before his time has expired on earth. And so therefore we could do a recap and see if we could pull some more truth because this word of God is full, fully compact, fully comparable. It is authentic. It is infallible. And so, therefore, you cannot finish it. Every time you look, you see something more than what you can manage. Hallelujah. And so, and so, 2 Timothy chapter 4, as we say the final request. Can you imagine sometimes you, 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 you look and, and say this is the final um, um, cup of tea that is available for me. Final. Everything of a, a, a cohesion, the end of time, uh, and so forth. So Paul now reached his final request. Serious matter, serious matter for a servant who served God over 35 years. He was called in AD 33 and he died in AD 68. That suggests a good 35 years. Serving God for 35 years is a lot of years. Uh -huh. Even before some of us born might be listening here. And hear what Paul wrote. Can we just do a, a recap a little bit? Again, back to verse 9, but my main point to this, this night would be uh, verse 14 again, uh, because some more gems is there. He said in verse 9, according to 
uh, the pen that he wrote to Timothy. Uh, do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. Beg of you, come quick. In other words, don't delay. It's it's imperative. It's your it's an utmost duty that I'm giving to you that you come because it's time for my head to be taken half. And he says now he says one of my fellow co-laborers in the vineyard has forsake me and he fully gone back out into the world. And in verse eleven, verse eleven. He said, only Luke is with me. Take Mark. Bring somebody with me that can give me a comforting word. Take Mark and bring him with thee. For he is profitable. Oh God, this man of God needs somebody even to encourage him. Uh -huh. Yes, because remember, Mark will not be inside of the jail, but even to make an appointment to go see the prisoner. The man who is condemned and death row. So he says, take Mark and bring him with thee. For he is profitable, profitable uh -huh, to me for the ministry. I want even to hear a servant of God pray with me. I want to hear even a song in my heart that you can even say, cheer up my brother. Live in the sunshine. God understand why. You need somebody to just give your word in your spirit. Because without somebody close by to share a word with you, you is like you're talking to the wall, and the wall behind you not even listening to you, and the wall beside you not hearing you. But somehow take Mark. Bring Mark. Bring Mark. And he laid out more points here in verse 12 of 2 Timothy chapter 4. He said, Antrachius, have I sent to Ephesus? In other words, assignment is there. So, Trachius gone to Ephesus to carry out the master work. He, as Paul sent the letter, Timothy now begin to analyze it and begin to might cry, begin to feel sorry, mourn for his spiritual father. Can you imagine the spiritual father at his last request sent to his spiritual son to come quick? Ah, uh, it's a dying moment where you should come, Timothy. I, 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 I can't hold out no longer. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he says in the letter, my departure is at hand. It's, it's time for me to go home back to this side but as he write these words in verse 13 he says the requisite um that that i'm asking for you and the request that i'm making is the cloak that i left at tarsus yes yes with carpus did i tell you last week carpus was a bishop in Macedonia, and therefore he go to him and let him give you the cloak when thou comest that's one he, he, one of the requests. Two, he said, bring thee, bring with thee, and the books. Notice the word books. It means that it's more than one books. Uh -huh. And he says, especially the parchment. Especially parchment. We know that Paul requests the entire Hebrew text. Yes, the entire scripture. I need the parchment, which is a scroll that roll up to write it. It's a durable material that it does not easy to be destroyed and hard to be destroyed. It's an, a thin piece of leather that properly kept. And so Paul now reached the level of his request. Yes, yes, yes. The parchment much better qualified made of sheep or goat skin. Did I tell you that last week? Yes. These parchments may well have been copies of the Hebrew scriptures. To the very end, Paul want to keep them. Or, can I use a phrase? Heat them like what Jeremiah would say. Heat the scroll or heat the word of God. Paul want to die with a sharp mind. 
focusing on the word of God. Paul wants to go to repose with the word dwelling fully richly within him. He don't want to die empty. He wants to die fully. Oh yes, Paul don't want to go home empty handed. He want to go home fully loaded with the scripture that dwells with him richly. Paul want to go home holy with the word dwell in him. He said, he said here, he said here, especially the parchment, especially the parchment. To the very end, Paul want to keep his mind accurately, skillful and sharp with every word that proceeded out of his mouth. He want to die fully with his heart, fulfilling and reading the word of God. That's why he already wrote to Timothy and said, if you give attendance to reading, make full proof, Timothy, of what the Lord has called you for. Now my departure is at hand, but I want to let you know, Timothy, there is danger lies ahead and danger behind you and danger beside you and danger up above you danger is surrounding you how comes you get that point timothy how comes you get that paul you will listen up what he wrote in the scripture here from second timothy 4 and verse 14 it's a warning i'm giving you timothy all the prerequisite of my departure it's only carry threefold but i have something in the secret ammunition to tell you about it and this is verse 14 what the scripture says here he says now hear what he says here alexander the copper simit did me much evil paul identify who is the culprit? Paul identify this evildoer. Paul and identify this troublemaker. Oh yes, because everywhere you go as preacher, teacher, minister, brother or sister in Christ, you must have a demon that surround you. Yes, you cannot escape, Timothy, but I'm warning you. I'm warning you. I'm warning you. Hear what the scripture says. He said, Alexander the Capasimit did me much evil. This seems to be the same person, and I quote, that was at Ephesus. According to what Paul is saying here, when the apostle was there, yes, Alexander the Capasimit, Alexander the Capasimit, oh yes, whom he afterward delivered up to Satan, along with Hymenius for all the blasphemous things that they done to Paul. And not only that, it is very likely he had lately been seen in Rome to now return to Ephesus. Watch the word what Paul is saying here. He says, Alexander the Capasimit does me much evil. Much is more than one. Is that true? Yes. Sometimes the enemy not only have scud me Missile and the left, he have it in front, he have it behind, and he have his coerced to. He seek at others. And so Paul is laying out the scripture here. He said, watch out for Alexander the Capacimit. Apostle Paul's character has been damaged by Alexander. Alexander. Apostle Kanduk has been damaged. He has already done reproaches and reviled evil to the Apostle Paul as a man of bad principle, a man of bad report, a man of bad conduct, bad behavior, bad deportment, bad service. Everything about Alexander the Capacimit is bad. Believer! Careful of spiritual Alexander the Capacimit in this time and season. Careful of Alexander the Deceiver. Paul is distinguishing himself from any other of that name. Don't come nowhere near this man. And to show the insolence of this man that though he was an illiterate person, yes, illiterate person is very dangerous because when you cannot even read or understand what the word of God is saying, you will fight to go to the last drip to stop the gospel from propagating. But you cannot. 
Mr. Mrs. Alexander, Miss Alexander the Capacity, you cannot stop the word of God. No, sir. In such a way, Paul now, he says, he said, yet, Timothy, this guy will resist the gospel. This guy will fight against the truth. He will resist the doctrine that I taught you. Because from though at a child you know the holy scripture, from though at a child you know the holy writ, you know the commandments, you know the doctrine, you know the writing, you know what the scripture says, but this guy will hinder, try to stop you. He will put blockage in your way, hindrance in your pathway. Look out, Timothy, for Alexander, the Kappa Simit. Amen. Look out. He will not stop at no price. He will go for all the high price to come against you, Timothy. He says, Alexander the Capacimit did me much evil. And so, Timothy, he will do the same thing to you. He will stop you. Timothy, know who you hang out with. Know who you are around. Watch out, Timothy. He identified this culprit. So, therefore, I am identifying Alexander the Capacimit as a troublemaker in the gospel. I am identifying Alexander the Capacimit as an endurance in the gospel. I am identifying Alexander the Capacimit as a bulldog in this gospel. Therefore, Timothy, watch out. He is a blasphemer and a reprobate person, and which arose not only from a private way, but as a resentment of the good news of the gospel of the cancellation. Resenting it, say all manner of evil against the gospel. But Timothy, watch out, Timothy. He will not stop at no avenue nor street. He will go at you. He will create injury. He had done it to me. He done it to me. So he will do it to you, my son. He will damage you. Character, your candor, your deportment, and your service. Amen. The zeal of this old demonic Alexander the Capacimit. He want to put a price tag on your head, Timothy. Oh, praise God. That's a deep one. He want to put a price tag by your side, I'm coming for you, Timothy, because I did it to Paul. Who are you, young man? And so the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible said, he had done it to me. What more you? The glory of God, the honor of God. He will stop at no avenue to stop you. He will go all out. Without mingling his own spirit and passion to destroy you, Timothy. He has a passion to destroy the gospel word. But let me say emphatically, nobody cannot destroy the gospel. But you only can flag us down, but you can't stop it. Slow us down. You will come up against the church of the building, but you can't stop the inward church. Hallelujah. The declaration of what I'm telling you, young man, Alexander the Kappa Simit, is dangerous. He said here, right in verse 14, the Lord reward him according to his work. The Lord reward him according to his work. Whatever he's doing, the Lord will take care of him but before the lord would take care of him timothy put up your guard if your guard was six feet make it be 12 and if it was 12 make it be 18 make it be high that when he's coming him has to in the rance is there him cannot come over your friends timothy the Lord will render him. The Lord will pay him back. The Lord will take care. Yes, the Lord will take care. But faith without works is dead, Timothy. You got to put your faith in 
action. Put the word in action. Don't wait until your fence is pushed down by Alexander the Kappa Simit. I'm talking spiritually now. As I said, spiritual Alexander the Kappa Simit is still around. They will come dressing, looking good as clergy and everything match, looking good. But the heart is corrupt. They will sit with you, eat with you, drink with you, but at the end of the day, they have the dagger, they have the weapon, they have the slice at for your throat, Timothy. I'm warning you, Timothy. I'm admonishing you, Timothy. I'm correcting you. Before my final vice box you heard, I penned it in writing. Hurry up and come, Timothy. I have something to tell you. Something to tell you, Timothy. This person is a troublemaker. This person is not a good person. He's a blasphemer. Mm -hmm. Of whom? Listen this. Of whom be thou aware? Be a, beware, Timothy. Verse 15. Verse 15. If you just join us, we are in the book of Second uh, Timothy chapter 4. And we are still on this subject. Paul final requests, but in his requests, he has warning. In his requests, he has admonition. In his requests, he is of correction and reproof. He is saying to the young man, look what verse 15 says. Of whom be thou, beware, danger lies ahead. Danger. Can you imagine when a veteran like this great seven star general warning a young ambassador said warning warning he's saying now to timothy take heed to these words because danger is on its way coming to you timothy hallelujah it's like a category four storm is coming and if can I raise it to category five? Yes, it's coming, Timothy. But look out. I already tell you his name. I already identify him. And so the Lord will repay him or reward him. But for you, Timothy, make sure you place your guard high. And he, of whom be thou aware of also? For he has greatly withstood our word. greatly withstood our word this great troublemaker here it is well being advisable to shun his company and have no conversation with such a person it is ironic sometimes we as believers are we as members of the body of christ wasting time having certain conversation with certain people because they already mind made up it's only the lord just deposit the word propagate the word dispense the word and say the lord bless you my brother because some people you cannot bring them up to the knowledge no only god almighty can do it alexander the capacity paul said of whom be thou aware beware also for he has greatly did you see the word greatly greatly mean no trouble he caused he caused me hurt he caused me pain he caused me discomfort trouble in one place trouble in the another place across the entire country alexander the capacity made a troublemaker don't have no conversation with him and be watchful, keep your God high up against him, that he might have no opportunity of doing you the earth that he have done to me. Uh, Paul, I, I'm telling you, Timothy, I've get the lick, I've get the click, I've get the box, I've get the buck, I've get it. Timothy, have no conversation. He will dress like an angel and come in, but have no conversation with such a person. He is very dangerous. So Timothy, watch, oh God. Don't give him no opportunity of doing you the earth that he have done to me. He hurt the church. He hurt the gospel. He hurt the brethren. So Timothy, don't let down your God. Be alert. Be a vigilant soldier. Be on the high esteem way. 
Don't let in Alexander the Capacity, for he is hardly greatly withstood our word, or the doctrine, or the writing, or the good news that is being propagated. The truth of the matter, the gospel that we preach, Paul is saying to Timothy, Timothy, which he opposed himself to and resists with all his might, with all his strength, with all his vigor. Some people hate God, church. Hate God's servant. Hate the word of God. People will kill you if you speak Jesus' name in certain place. Speak the name of Jesus, you dead man. Oh yes. I've been to enough country, a lot of country. And you got to be careful what you says in certain zone. Yeah. Paul is saying endeavor, endeavor. To keep on your guard, Timothy. Resist with all his might. Resist with all your strength. Don't get into argument. He made up with a lot of falls. Alexander the Capacimi. He is really a blasphemer. And, and this was the true reason why Paul is saying to Timothy. Stay away from this man. Stay away. Don't get into no form of conversation. The apostle have good reason to tell Timothy this. The implication here and him and why he would have done you this, Timothy, because the same thing you I admonish you to go propagate, that's what he will come against you for. The good news, the doctrine, the writing of the word of God. This is the trouble. It's not Timothy literally he's coming after. It's the word that in propagate. That's why Paul said to Timothy, preach the word in season and out of season. Be on the alert. Look out for Alexander the Capacimit because Alexander the Capacimit have many branches. Many branches. They will come as a member but yet they are not. He has done me personal injury. Avoid him. He has done me personal hurt. Avoid him. He has done me personally upsetting of the church. Avoid him. He has done it to me. He will do it to you, Timothy. So be on the alert. Why should I be on the alert, Paul? Paul, hear what he says. He has done greatly withstood our world. He caused trouble too often time. Society will take in certain people in church but when you take them in they are demon they just come in as a holy angel they come in to wreck the church to wreck the ministry but god but god 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 will repay you brother sister god will repay you oh glory to god paul reached to the level of his requests what are you requesting now, Paul? He says, verse 16, at my first answer, at my first answer, no man stood with me. At my first answer, at my first answer, I have no friend, I have no sister, I have no brother, I have no closeness, relationship, Nothing, nobody, nobody showed up. At my first answer, no man stood with me. But all men forsook me. What are you saying, Pastor? No defense, no counsel, no attorney. No, 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 nobody. All men forsook me. I pray God that it may not, God Almighty. Meaning that when he made his first defense against the charges that laid against him, he listened good, the charges that laid against him. In other words, no one came to court. No one showed judicial appearance for him in Rome. No man appeared in his 
case, no man, no man to speak for him, even to write a good character request of this man. No, sir, no man to be a witness for him. No man. Why, God Almighty? Oh, no one to plea his cause. No one to say, I know that man. No one, no one. But all men for certain, all his friends, all his cohorts, all his brethren, oh Lord, hallelujah. From Judah and from Asia, I've traveled so many places and propagate the gospel and no one showed up to say, I know the man. Uh, I know the man. This is very dangerous for a servant who labor in the vineyard 35 years, my God Almighty, and plant so many churches, heal so many sickness, but the hour of his departure is at hand. No man stood with me. No man, nobody. Hallelujah, nobody with me how can that be pastor it is dangerous and of the loose of these life and the disciple of Christ now we when we are in trouble many a time nobody come to our rescue oh yes if a pastor ever declare that he's sick I'm just using it as a phrase now. Don't take it out of the context. Oh, I can't believe Pastor Sick. Oh, no one even will give you a call. But it happened. If it happened to Paul, it happened to you, brother. When he was apprehended, who oh, all that at the time forsook him and fled. Oh, yes, even Jesus. When they took him from the garden, all his disciples ran. Even the Bible said, Peter walked afar off. Even when they went into the room and Peter was close by the fire, wherever it was happening. Oh, yes. And they said, uh, uh, you, were, you were with him. Peter said, no, no, no. I'm, I don't know the man. I don't know him. I never see him yet. I never hear from him yet. I don't know who you're talking about, lady. Don't you mix me up here. And good God from Zion, the man know Jesus. But yet Peter said, I know him not. Thanks be to God, Jesus did already tell him, said, Peter, you are going to deny me. So if they deny Christ, it's not a problem to deny you or me. It's not a problem. Here goes the scripture. Paul says here, no man stood with me. Christ were the same thing when he was apprehended. All forsook him and fled. And hear what Paul says now. I pray God. I pray God. I pray God. Oh, yes, yes. I pray God. Why I pray that it may not be laid to their charge. Why? Why? Because the man of God wants to go home with a clean heart. Hallelujah. I don't want no baggage to come packing within me. I want my spirit. Hallelujah my spirit to connect to heaven now all the terrestrial things that happened to me i don't even want to hear it all that they done to me i don't want to even hear it because my departure is at hand my heavenly expectation now is coming to bring forth fruits which is the fruits of the spirit oh yes my spiritual destination is at hand I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge, that this sin or this armor thorn may not be laid or imputed to them. Why? Because my cleansiness, I want a full load cleanse. The only thing I want to die with in my mind and in my heart is the parchment, the word of God. Hallelujah! My shock, holy Hey, God, I don't want you to punish nobody for their action. Please, Lord, don't let it lay against them for it, but that it might be pardoned or justify them. So differently does he express himself on the account of his departure, and the account of his dead moment. Uh, can I say the dead moment? Yes, the dead moment is kicking, so I don't want no hindrance in my walk with God. The man of God demonstrates a different tone here. He expresses himself on the account of these, that on the account of the copper simit, messing him up, I don't even want no malice, no angriness, no bad mindness, no hurt, nothing. I don't want nothing in my walk in last minute. Stop my walk. End of my walk. 
These thoughts surprisingly, my brother, surprising my sister. Paul reached to the level, give them a surprise. He said, of whom thou aware also, for he had greatly withstood our word. At my first answer, no man stood with me. But all men forsake me. I pray God. I make my request to God. I make my answer to God. Oh, glory to God. Paul said, no one stood with me. Paragomania, this technical word here. And when he referred to a defense counselor, a defense attorney, a criminal attorney, or an advocate, the man of God is asking now, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, oh, justify these brethren. Justify all those that come against me. Lay no charge on them, Lord. I pray, I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. No, Lord, but he did not let it make him bitter. He did not let him get anger. He did not let him give the maliciousness. No, sir. No matter how it hurt, no matter what taking place, I stand clean. I stand pure before the Almighty God become a departure. Is at hand. Notwithstanding the Lord with me. Nobody come with a personal or he been in those days no phone. So it's Oh God, I'm I'm, I'm all by myself. Notwithstanding the Lord. Notwithstanding the Lord with me. Not to the Lord stood with me. Yahweh Elohim stood with me what a powerful strength here paul now reached to the level that nobody stood with me but the lord stood with me is that clean cut no wife no close friend no family member no apostles our god no brothers in christ no sister nobody but the lord i said it now every one of us have with final moment the final request and if you know yourself, it's only the Lord will stood with you. Read it. The Lord stood with me. One, two, and strengthened me that by me, the preaching, my God Almighty, the Lord stood with me. The Lord strengthened me. It means the pouring in of strength came from the Lord. My strength, my strength cometh from the Lord. It's always available. Don't care how dark the night is. And treacherous is the pathway. The Lord has strength. There is no need to give in or give up. Oh my God. Even when you know it's your final moments. Oh, you could say like the Apostle Paul when he wrote to the saints in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. When he said, finally, my brethren, it's the final record here. Be strong in the Lord. That's why he could recall back here now, the Lord strengthened me. How comes the Lord is strengthening a man who is coming home to be with the Lord? Because he don't want Paul now to get bitter or hungry in his spirit. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I don't want to get boisterous, Paul, and carry any malice for Alexander spiritually now, the Kappa Semite. No, Paul, I don't want you. I will give you strength for your final request. I will give you strength for the final moment. I will agonize you. I will rejuvenate you. I will refuse you. I will strengthen you. I will give you the energy to go to the final winning post. Because you already be a winner, Paul. It's just for the last moment, the last lap. Can you imagine? The man of God says here, the Lord strengthen me. Strengthen me. God of mercy. It means to pour in strength, to pour in the higher, to pour in energy, to pour in vitality. Can you imagine coming like Paul was getting IV in his... Oh, hallelujah! 
like he's getting IV passing through his vein into his body. Hallelujah. Because now at his departure is so rugged in one sense. When I say rugged, no man stood with him. No man come look for him. No man make a request. No man stand with him. But the Lord gave him strength. Sending some spiritual IV in the blood vein. Wherein Paul could rise up and says here. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. He says here that by me the preaching might be fully. Pyromania the preaching might be. Here goes Paul saying known and that all the Gentiles, all the heathen uh -huh, might hear. And, mm -hmm. and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lions. Look, the lion. Paul trials before near he has reached the end. Mm -hmm. From this one point of matter, the conclusion now is at its end. Paul says here, Aha, uh -huh. Nero, preach, Nero, I preach the gospel, even as he did before Felix. This is what he's preaching to Nero now. He says here, Aha, uh -huh. the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Therefore, the lion of the tribe of Judah will be able to break every chain and give us the victory again and again. This would refer to the book of Psalms 22. It simply means here he was not immediately executed, but his record here is when trial is taking place. Paul make it clear that he could write this letter. We are much richer for it today in a spiritual terms spiritual term I am personally richer in the world today that my journey will come to an end one day oh yes and no one will even stood with you whether your wife love you or your wife not love you at the end of your request it's you and your God only it's you and your God only Will your conduct, will your deportment, will your service be answered the master call? Will you stand up like what Paul said here? The Lord strengthen me in the inward, strengthen in his spirit, strengthen his might in the inward. As I say, spiritually, the man was getting spiritual IV. Oh yes, the man inward was strong. Long suffering kicking, joy kicking, mercy kicking. Oh yes, 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 mercy kicking. Paul now will have mercy even upon Alexander the Capacity. The Lord will have I will not pay you, but the Lord will pay you, Alexander. No joy of the Lord now reaches strength. He was weak in the flesh. Oh, and could not do nothing without Christ. Yes, he was weak in this terrestrial thing here. Oh, yes, this terrestrial thing is full of, uh, of corruption. It's just a matter of time. And Christ was his strength in him. It lay unto him. He looked for that expectation of which he often experienced. And now is at his final moment. His strength is now coming. Oh, to plead his own cause. He make his defense without fear. Oh, hallelujah. He make his defense, his defense, his request without fear. I don't even care about the charge. He gave him presence of mind, boldness, courage, interpreted freedom of thoughts, freedom of expression. Can you imagine the man of God begin to speak boldly? Ah, Nero, I am an ambassador for Christ. I am a preacher and I will continue to preach right in the presence of your face, Nero. Can you imagine Nero must have put on pause? Oh Lord, God, call him Ashasasa. Nero must have been put on pause. I'm free to speak now because I'm, I'm death row. I'm free to tell you that God remain God, Nero. Take my neck off, Nero. That does not stop the gospel because I have a young pit bull coming after. His name is Timothy and he will continue to propagate the gospel of the conciliation that God was in Christ, conciliating the world unto himself. He did not reckon my charges. I was a notorious wretch, an outrageous wretch, an outrageous despicable man persecuting the church. But one day, Nero, one day, the king of kings 
shine light brighter than the noonday sun and blinded my eyes and he said Saul sir why thou persecute me can you imagine when the man of God answered he said Lord who art thou he said I am Jesus whom thou persecute nearer kill me now Nero must have kept his scared. The man begin to express his thought, express his freedom, express his reason, propagating the word right in Nero, Nero face. You know, his heart was fully loaded with the gospel of the cancellation. His thought was fully loaded with the truth. Oh yes, his mouth was opened with wisdom and knowledge and understanding. His thoughts and his reason take into account Nero must say, what manner of man did guy is. He know that I'm going to kill him and he's still preaching. He's preaching just the same way. All which he take notice of. The thankfulness and the admonition of the great God and the divine goodness that God stood with me and gave me strength. I'm not scared Nero. Bring it on Nero. Bring it on Nero. The gospel must be preached Nero. Even if you kill me the gospel still preach. Nero kill me now. Let the gospel let me go home and the gospel will still preach. What Nero? Nero are you scared to kill me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Knowing oh, who Nero is, he began to make thought of Nero. And he said, an original of it. Watch what he says here. He said, he said, the Lord strengthened me and fully know. And that all the Gentiles might hear. All the Gentiles might hear. Oh, yes. Because he came. Uh -huh. He came to propagate the gospel mainly to the Gentiles. Preach little time to the Jews. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. So Nero, you are just a scumbag. You are no danger to me, Nero. You better go look for me, command in chief, which is Christ Jesus, the head of the universe. The one who make you, Nero. Can you imagine Paul begin to say to Nero, the one who make you, Nero. I'm breathing you, the breath of life, Nero. Bring it on, Nero, because my God will be able to supply my needs, even in death. My life already been aid in God through Christ Jesus, who strengthened me. And the life that I now live, Nero, I live by by the faith of the Son of God who gave himself a Paris and ransom for me. Nero, where are you? Come out here, Nero. I need to preach some more. Mm. He says, he said that the Gentiles might hear and, and, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the hands of the enemy, the lion. Lord God, Paul trials has taken a different turn. Paul trials begin to propagate and hear what he said in verse 18. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil works. I feel like preaching is coming on here. Let me stop right here. The Lord, uh -huh, the Lord shall notice the word shall it not mean the must or might the Lord shall deliver me from every evil Nero, evil works Nero, evil pressure Nero, even killing me Nero the Lord shall deliver me are you sick with your head Paul? No I'm preaching the gospel of truth with security I am talking, with confidence I am talking, he was being sure of being delivered from the evil works of Nero and all the evil works of Alexander the Cap of Simeon. Paul know that he know that no weapon that can form against me shall prosper. Every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom. I feel like preaching coming on me. Hey, let me stop. I said, Nero, every evil works that you are doing now, you're going to give an account. Because one of these days, you shall be for the great God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You shall face God. Nero, you must come before the throne. You must bow your knees. Oh my God. To the great God. Because the Bible says, every knee shall bow Nero and every tongue confess Nero that Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm preaching to you evil work, Nero. Wicked man, Nero, I'm preaching to you. Wicked, wicked in your heart, Nero, I'm preaching to you. Wicked in your mind, Nero. You are heaveless. Wicked, Nero. 
Can you imagine Paul begin to get radical in dispensing the word right in the face of Nero and all his associates? They says, Shadow the Ukalaba. Can you imagine that the catch the scared because Paul is lacing out the word of truth? What is that? I think I said it the other day. What is the difference between death and life? What is the difference? Uh, yeah, look at me. This is a Bible. If I put it down here so it cannot move. So this book, this book is dead. Uh, this is dead. The only time it can move, life move it. That's the difference. So life is movements that is cessation. And so therefore, this night, the request of Paul was so how can I say, so truthful to Timothy. The request, Timothy, bring me the cloak. Bring me the books. But most of all, bring the parchment. I want to dispense some word in Nero ears that when he hear those words, those words will be so sharp that will cut and dispense every demon. Nero, your time has ending. Neo, your time has finished. My time is finished now, Nero, but your days is coming shortly. You can tell a, a, a big chief of the armed force, something like that. God bless you, my brothers and sisters, this night. I love you. I praise God for all those that are listening and watching this Bible study. Pray that the Spirit of God will give you clarity of wisdom and ability and precision. I pray that your eyes will open to the unsearchable riches of Christ Jesus. Let not no Alexander this copper smith come nigh thy dwelling. Just be faithful to your God and trust God according to his word. Live by the word. Even when Paul had died, he preached in front of Nero with the vice of the Holy Spirit. Paul would say, you kill this flesh, you cannot kill the spirit. Hallelujah. So therefore, God bless you this evening. Let me remind you one more time. Please, you can go and cash up. Make your contribution. We are in our church building fund. And we want to get uh, the move for the gospel's sake. Amen. Not for Boris's sake, but for the gospel's sake. It's nothing about I, but about the Christ of God. So if you go and cash up, please make your contribution. Make the Lord speak to your heart. This pastor will never tell you, say, give A or B. But you, in your heart and conscience, go and cash up. Dollar sign, Gospel Way Church. God bless you. And we're going to look to the Lord in prayer. Even though shall we just look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for your blessed word. We thank you for your rhema. We thank you for the locusts that you sent to us even now. Lord, it gives us edification and spiritual wisdom and knowledge and understanding. It's a faculty of reason and ability. So even now, Lord, as you empty your son, I pray that you deposit more of your word within. Edify me, Lord, that as I dispense your word, it will bring conviction to your people. Open blinded eyes and set the captive free. I pray that healing will pass through this medium. Even now, Lord, thank you for what you're doing in the exalted name Christ Jesus. God, we bless you and praise you even now. We give you the hallelujah and the shout of command in a toad of praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Now, may grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you now and forevermore. Amen and amen.